I'd never mention that there were men as dark as this. Wow, look at that nose. He's just like a pig. He's a monster! Hi! In today's episode, I'm joined by uh, Matt Forney, who is a writer on uh, Return of Kings. Uh, thank you for joining me today, first off. Uh, thanks for having me on. Okay, so I contacted you uh, because you've written a lot of articles on your time in the Philippines and your views on Filipino women. My first question for you is, what made you decide to write these articles on the Philippines? Well, it was uh, uh, writing is my trade, and in these particular case, you know, uh, a few years ago, I had become independent from working on my blog and, and writing in general, and I had wanted to go abroad for for some time because that's uh, it's it's what a lot of the, you know these location in, independent people do, and I wanted to see more of of the world. I was initially going to go to Thailand, mostly because Thailand is like the stereotypical expat destination, but I wasn't too crazy about it. But uh, about back in 2013, I was in New York City, and I met up with a friend of mine, uh, Mark Zolo, the Naughty Nomad. He's a, another blogger in this, this sort of part of the internet. He's a good guy. And I mentioned to him that I was thinking about going to Thailand, and he says, no, 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 go to the Philippines, uh, because as he put it... Uh, Everyone there speaks uh, speaks English, and the girls there all dream of marrying a white guy. Uh, kind of, kind of a joke like that. So I was like, huh. It, it didn't take too much convincing for me to not want to go to Thailand. So I checked out the Philippines instead, and I've written about my uh, my experiences there. I haven't been back there since I was there in 2014, so I, I'm I wouldn't I wouldn't know what it's like today. But uh, you know, it's I wrote. I, I write about the things I do and my observations in the world. That's what I do for a living. Okay. Uh can you tell the audience how long you were there again in the Philippines? I was there for about three months. I spent two months in Davao, which is a large city on the southern end of the, the island of Mindanao, which is the largest island in the Philippine, uh, southernmost island of the Philippine chain. And I spent a month in Manila, uh, which is the capital, as, as we all know. Okay. Um, so, in your opinion, how deep does white worship run in the Philippines? Probably deeper than any other country in Asia. I should preface this by saying the only other Asian countries I spent time in are Singapore and Japan, so I don't have the widest frame of reference. But the the way it works in the Philippines is that it's it's very the Philippines is very xenophilic. You know, the opposite of xenophobia. If xenophilia is a word, they're very curious and welcoming about other cultures, particularly uh, white white cultures, uh, white countries, white people. Um, in the way I, I observe in the Philippines, that there's almost a, uh, I mean, not almost, there is a sort of racial hierarchy based on how European you look or how European, uh, you know, y you can make yourself look. Um, particularly when it comes to women, uh, women who have more European facial features, European heritage, uh, are considered more attractive. And and this is evident in the country's, the country's, uh, Celebrities, uh, their actors and their uh, their their singers and whatnot tend to be disproportionately of at least part European stock. Um, you see white skin whitening cream being sold everywhere. I mean that's common in Asia in general, but you know the Philippines really takes it to another level. On uh, billboards walking down the street, you'll see models airbrushed look uh, white, uh, whiter. Than, I, I saw many uh, you know m billboard models in the country. Uh, featuring women and men who are whiter, lighter skinned than I was, um, and in in general, um, people of a uh, European heritage are considered uh, both more attractive and they're more more likely to be be wealthier and climb the the racial hierarchy. I mean, it, it, this sounds extreme, but when I was uh, dealing with uh, with girls in the Philippines, I I strongly suspected that some of the girls I I met were actually trying to get pregnant with me. Uh, without a marriage, because uh, if they had a partially white baby, that baby might uh, have a better, would have a much better chance of succeeding in the culture there. Uh, that's just how things work there. And frankly, it, it disturbed me a little because it, I, I'm not really a big fan of, of of racial fetishism, as it were. I get stereotyped because I went to the Philippines as having yellow fever and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I I, I I'm I'm pretty neutral on the whole thing. 
uh, I the idea of being being fetishized for for my race or fetishizing someone else for their race kind of kind of turns me off and disturbs me a little. And if you're white and in your Fili- in the Philippines, you'll you'll have that constantly. If you're looking for you know a, a rich dating life, you'll you'll be able to take advantage of it. But in, me personally, I I kind of I kind of got unnerved of it pretty quickly. Okay, uh, you mentioned that you've been to Japan and Singapore. How does uh, white worship work there relative to the Philippines? It's much, much weaker. The Philippines is in many ways an outlier relative to other Asian countries um, because the Philippines has a long history of it, – it's strategically located in the middle of the ocean. So it's a crossing point for various different cultures. It was under Spanish domination for centuries. And it was under American domination. There's a large amount of Chinese influence. So Philippine culture is in many ways uh, sort of an amalgam of all these these cultures. Uh, I compare Philippine culture to the Katamari from Katamari Damacy. If you've, uh, if some of your listeners might have heard of that game, it was a Japanese video game from 20, 2004, I think it was, where you control this gigantic adhesive ball, and the objective was just to suck things up. And as you would, the ball would just get bigger and bigger and take on its own character. That's Philippine culture. They they sort of um, absorb cultural influences from everyone around them, but they retain their own unique identity. Um, whereas in Singapore and and Japan, they have a, a much more a defined sense of who they are. They, they're much uh, they're not nearly as, as opening welcoming to outsiders. Japan in particular is uh, it's it's a very xenophobic culture. You know the Japanese are very polite and, and honorable and, and all that, but they don't they don't much care for foreigners and they generally you know don't don't make it easy for for uh, foreigners to get along, even if they they're outwardly polite to them. So the Philippines is. Uh, is a is very much an outlier when it comes to Asian cultures in this respect. Okay. Um, and in terms of dating, how do you think, if you can speak on this, how do you think that uh, white worship in the Philippines affects how Filipino women view white men compared to Filipino wo- Filipino men, black or Hispanic men? Well, they're, they're, they're viewed as, uh, white men are being viewed as being more masculine and, and generally, you know, better off. Uh, you know, the, the money issue is a big thing. You get a lot of gold diggers. They're fairly easy to weed out, if, particularly if you're using online dating. But basically, and also, what standards, the standards that Filipino women, Filipino women have for white men tend to be a bit, bit lower than, than, than they would for Filipino men. You can actually get away with a lot more as a white man over there in some respects. Um, I should also mention one other thing that way, reason way in which the Philippines is an outlier is that uh, they're not as uh, racist towards non-white men as other countries. Like black men are, are also very well liked in the Philippines. Not to the degree that white men are, but you know, a black man who goes there and dates it will, will really won't have a problem dating girls. And again, this is attributable to the um, influence that American culture has and the American occupation had on their culture. Um, but my my observation is that the the girls I, I ran into um, in Davao, which is um, particularly a, that's a more conservative city, it's kind of off the beaten track. Its main claim to fame is that uh, Rodrigo Duterte, the current president of the Philippines, he was mayor of Davao for about thirty years, um, and it's uh, his claim to fame was making it a very safe city after it was uh, one of the most violent cities in the world prior to him taking over in the nineteen eighties. Uh, the culture there is very conservative. There aren't a lot of one night stands. Girls there tend to be, uh, you know, you know, they, they 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 won't just give it up to any guy who comes along. Uh, you have to take them out on a few dates first, and they also tend to be a bit more naive and trusting. Manila, on the other hand, is more um, it's more liberal. It's more Americanized, more Westernized. Girls there tend to you know have have their own jobs, make their own money, and uh, ha- have uh, more more Western sexual mores, as it were. So that, 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 those would be the primary differences. Okay. Um, and in terms of Yellow Fever, you've also written articles about how uh, people like Anna, Anna Canna, who have been very vocal in demonizing men who like Asian women and have been very vocal about Yellow Fever. What is your take on Yellow Fever as a whole as its argument? Just give me your take on that. I, I don't think yellow fever is really uh, – I mean it obviously exists to a certain extent. But number one, I think women like her overplay it. And number two, they ignore the, the role that, that Asian women foster in sort of you know putting it out there. Uh, from, from my observation, most of the men who would be categorized, characterized as having uh, yellow fever, like you know white men, uh, they aren't really uh, – you know 
exotifying Asian women per se for, for their Asian-ness. They're just looking for, for women that they find agreeable and who will respect them. And in in their case, they have an easier time finding that among Asian women than they do among white women. Um, the, the big cultural observation I made back when this was going on is that, you know, Asian women tend not to uh, disrespect their men in public. You know, you get all these, you know, Western American cultures full of all these, uh, you know, casual put downs of men, misandry, if you want to call it that. You see it in TV advertisements, TV shows, etc., cetera, um, and all these sort of anti-male jokes. Uh, you don't really have that in, in Asian culture. There's a you know, the whole concept of saving face. So Asian women will tend to show more outward respect and, and deference to, 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 their, to their boyfriends and husbands. They won't try to cruelly cut them down or betray them in, in petty and pointless ways. And that's usually what these men are just looking for. They don't really care about a, a, their Asianness per se. They just want a woman who will respect them, and they just have, uh, they're just have an easier time finding that among among Asian women than among white women. And the other thing that is is not mentioned in this equation is that uh, a lot of you know Asian women play into this because they find white women, white men to be desirable, either because you know uh, uh, you know they view them as being more masculine, being more successful, and also because paradoxically they find them to be uh, less controlling and less uh, patriarchal than than Asian men. You know, there's a you know phenomenon I believe among Asian women feminists who will you know go to dating a uh, white man because they're not uh, they have they have more ec- they have more egalitarian views when it comes to relationships. They're willing to share in chores and whatnot. They they don't beat them. You know, uh, th- this is uh, this is to a certain extent somewhat common among uh, uh, cross cultural dating in general. Um, you actually see a bit of it. I, I live in Eastern Europe now. You see a bit of it here. Uh, you like in, in Ukraine, for example. Uh, American and Western men are seen as seen as desirable because they're they're less likely to to get drunk and and beat their wives compared to Ukrainian men. Uh, so that that that's a big part of it as well. Um, just to add to your point, I think that while there are creepy white men who go after Asian women, they say creepy things on OkCupid okay um, and stuff like that. I think that the argument in general is kind of, um, I guess, a way for women in general through feminism which again i'm not a feminist it's a way for women to shame men for getting what they want out of a relationship so if asian women in whether or not feminists see it this way are are seen as submissive or like catering to what men want since feminism is about trying to get what women want at the expense of men you have to shame these men for trying to go after Asian women. No, it's not okay to like a girl that's submissive. It's not okay to like somebody that is willing to have a relationship with, with you. You have to do it my way. You have to, you have to be what I want you to be. And if that's not if that's not what you're going to do, then I'm going to shame you for liking these women, and I'm going to show them uh, these women why you're bad. I think that is my issue with how the yellow fever argument has been constructed. Not so much that there aren't white men who aren't creepy. But it's just become a way for women, particularly Asian women, to get what they want, which is white men who have power and status who don't question them, while shaming men for getting what they want, which may be a submissive woman or somebody who doesn't yell and bark about feminism every five seconds. Now, do you agree or disagree with that? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And, and I would add to that, like, I think the woman you mentioned earlier that I had been responding to in one of these articles, uh, she gave as an example uh, of, of, of creepy white men. She claimed that... Uh, a man once came up to her speaking Japanese and was like shocked, discovered that she didn't speak Japanese. Um, I, I think that's contrived. It didn't really happen. And just because it just seems some, too far out of the realm of reality for, for something to be real. And the other thing, too, is like someone who actually goes to the effort of learning a foreign language just so they can, you know, you know, meet women or, 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 or interact with that culture. That, that That's a, a trait that should be seen as, I think, somewhat admirable. I mean, I, you know, most pe- for most people, learning languages are, are quite difficult, particularly when it comes to native English speakers learning Asian languages because they have nothing in common with each other. Like right now, I've been I've been trying to learn uh, Hungarian and Ukrainian, which are fellow European languages, and I've been struggling to do so because uh, it, it's a very difficult task. You know, if, if someone – if a guy – is able to to learn Japanese or or Mandarin to to be able to better interact with people from that culture and understand that culture. I don't see why that you know should be shamed. It, it's it's uh, you know being able to master a second language is is a pretty uh, pretty admirable trait, I would say. Okay, um, my last question in terms of this part of the interview would be um, whether it be in America or or 
or your experiences in East Asia, do you feel as though Asian women discriminate towards black and Hispanic men? Uh, discriminate... Uh, or against, I should say. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I'd, I'd say to a certain extent they do. In the Philippines, like I said, black men usually have it pretty easy as well. Uh, not to the degree that white men do, but pretty easy. The analogy I made is that like the different experiences that white men will have in, in the Philippines versus black men, like comparing a man who has $20 billion versus someone who has $15 billion. Yeah, the guy who has $20 billion will have more, has more money than you. But you both have more money than you're ever going to be able to spend. You know, uh, one of my best friends is black, and you know he's he served several tours in the Philippines as part of his service in the army, and he absolutely loves the women over there. Um, it's um, you you get more discrimination in countries like uh, uh, Korea and and China, I would imagine. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know so much about Japan. There's actually a good book on Jap Japanese culture. I recommend it called Black uh, Passenger Yellow Cabs by Stefan Bryan. He's a Jamaican uh, English teacher who lived in Japan for for ten years, and the book is mainly about his dealings with Japanese women and uh, his experiences as an English teacher. And he had a pretty easy time over there. From according from his according to his estimation, uh, Japanese girls uh, absolutely love uh, you know black American culture and and, and uh, hip hop and stuff stuff like that. Uh, I don't I haven't had enough enough time in Japan to really really you know confirm whether that's true or not, but it, it's worth considering. Okay, um, so I'm going to switch gears now towards. I guess looking at what you posted and how that represents your argument, which is white worship. Um, now, some people I've noticed have criticized your post regarding Filipino women. And I've read an article that said that, you know, if a Filipino woman doesn't speak English, they're dumb as rocks. And if they wear bikinis, they're a slut. And I've also seen the book, well, I haven't read it, but I've looked at the title of it Do the Philippines How to Make Love of Filipino Girls in the Philippines. Do you understand why some of your views about Filipino women or what you post, how you portray them, can be somewhat offensive to people? Oh, I certainly get it. You know, I mean, my entire running career has been, uh, you know, de part of dealing with people who who hate me, and and and, and I, I admit it. You know, I I, I admit to uh, to to going out of my way to describe certain things in salacious and offensive ways. You know, to me to me it's amusing, but you know, at the same time, I've never I've never lied. You know, my depiction of uh, of of things. Is is the truth as as from what I have uh, you know from what I have experienced and the what I experienced in the Philippines is uh, you know I, I go to I go to both ends of the spectrum. You have a lot of girls there who are very very slutty, and you have girls who who make perfect wives and mothers. It, it it runs the gamut depending on where you are and what you're you're targeting. You know I I, I try to capture the. Uh, the, the the richness of the culture from my observations as, as best I as best I could um, you you do run you know people are going to get offended at that and I understand why they are because you know you're, you're a foreigners coming into your country and commenting on your culture and your women uh, um, and most people are, are generally going to you know take a little bit of exception to that and I, and that doesn't bother me because I'm I'm not I'm not lying I'm not and I'm not trying to you know cut anyone down in in uh, well maybe a, one or two people I'm trying to cut down but I'm just uh, I'm 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 just telling the truth as as I see it man you know this is this is how things are um, don't don't get mad at me for just observing what uh, what I what I what I see you know I mean I they're gonna get mad at me that's their problem. Um. To add on to uh, my point, though, there is there is an issue, at least in America, when it comes to criticizing a woman's weight, because women are very sensitive to that. And, I, you know, to an extent, I understand, but not not really, honestly. I, I'm just saying that because considering how, like you mentioned before, how women are quick to criticize men about anything, whether you're, you know, you're balding or you're fat or you don't have a job, you know, to say that if you're a man and you say that you want somebody that isn't 300 pounds or slightly overweight if you're in shape I don't think that that's really too crazy to say um, and I think in our culture we demonize men for that again because it's about with feminism getting what women want and shame and if you can't get men in terms of a logical argument shaming men into having that logical argument which is that hey if I'm you know a good if I'm in shape, why can't I have a woman that's in shape too? No, you're going to shame them for for wanting that. Uh, the reason why I mention all of this is because in your article, Six Things That White Girls Can, can Learn From Filipinas, you tell basically white women to, st to start losing weight fatty. Now, I understand if a man doesn't want 
a woman that's fat or out of shape, but to be respectful, I've seen some of the photos that you've had, and it, I think it may discredit your argument to, to write something like yeah. that and then see that you're overweight yourself. What, what do yeah, you have to I say mean, about that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not fronting. You know, I, I run under my real name, like, unlike most people, when I'm honest about who I am. You know, I'm, I'm bald and I'm, and I'm bald, uh, overweight. You know, I've never, I've never tried to hide that. But, you know, the reality is that uh, men and women look for different things in, in uh, you know, when it comes to dating. That's, that's just reality. You know, I've, I've been overweight most of my life, but I've never really had a problem with women per se. I've had a problem with, uh, you know, attracting crazy women or women who are, who are out to get me or whatnot. But I've never had a problem uh, getting laid or getting dates, as it were. You know, then that's because, uh, you know, women don't necessarily look for physical, uh, you know, attractiveness in the same way that, that men do when, it, you know, the, the way around. You know, in fact, um, I've spent a lot of time in Ukraine over the, the past year. Um, and in Ukraine and Russia and, and other Slavic cultures, uh, actually being being uh, being too into your looks uh, as a man can actually put you at a disadvantage. Like Ukrainian women will actually make fun of Italian or French guys and call them gay because of all the time they spent trying to, you know, primp their appearances, you know, with the clothes and whatnot. Um, the, the cultural... Uh, idea there is that men are expected to be strong and uh, physically strong and uh, able to provide. You know, in fact, I actually had a girl just sort of summarize it for me. You know, man's job is to work, woman's job is to be pretty. Um, and and again, you know, I, I realize that uh, people are going to you know, people have been calling me fat since the, since the days of of Ur go, taking on Ur South. It doesn't really bother me. I mean, because it's you know, it's the truth. Um, if people want to criticize me for that, they can go ahead. Um, I think just part of it is because it, the people I'm criticizing tend to think take things more personally than than I do. You know, I I don't care if people call me bald or fat because, well, I you know it's honestly because it doesn't it doesn't affect me. But I I point out some of these things and people lose their minds because uh, they're I, I, I the culture is training people to be more sensitive, I guess, or maybe I'm just just kind of psychopathic and that I don't care, but that's just how I just, that's just how I feel about things. And I, I respect that. Um, again, I think that at least in America, we go too far in terms of shaming men for their preferences. Um, but I just, I'm just telling you what like the left would find to be an easy attack. Um, if you're sometimes brutally honest about your opinions, it's not whether or not what you say are facts or whatever. They're just because people don't like what you have to say, they're going to find something to discredit you. And that's an area where, where people on the left, at least, would discredit you, I would say. Um, now, in terms of um, your, your experience as a Filipino woman, I've actually interviewed somebody else named David Bond who's gone out to Asia. He's a white guy. He's gone out to Asia and he documents his experiences with Asian women with his camera, sometimes like to an extreme. Um, but the reason why I mention him is because since you're bringing up your experiences of Filipino women... I think it might be um, to wait to not discredit yourself is to show your encounters with photos and you know filming your experiences and stuff like that. I can't necessarily find any photos with you with Filipino women. Um, are there any examples of that? And can you like? Do you feel as though it's discrediting to not show that to the public? Well, I, I could. I could also give you their their phone. I could also give you their phone numbers and uh, and addresses so you can stalk them in person. I could give you their their license plate number so you can go slash their tires. I mean, I, I don't I don't buy this argument for the simple reason that in this day and age, privacy is something that you know you have to value to a certain extent if you're a public figure. I mean, in the past uh, couple of years alone, particularly since I, I I ramped up my political reporting, I've had to deal with. Um, I was actually doxxed, for example, by uh, Antifa's in Chicago when I was living there a couple of years ago. They actually uh, got my uh, – they, they tricked my girlfriend into giving over my phone number and they also doxxed my parents. Um, the reason I don't splay all this stuff online is because, um, number one, I don't want them to get involved. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't want to get some girl that I'm dating or, or casually involved in, involved in my online bullshit. You want to go after me, that's fine. You know, but don't, don't, don't attack anyone I care about. Don't go after my family or friends. You know, they're off limits. Um, and 
keeping that stuff offline is the best way to do so. The other thing, too, is uh, even if I were to provide all this evidence, the people who are dedicated to hating me would just find other, other ways to excuse it, uh, hate, attack me. Like they, they'd accuse me of faking it. They'd accuse me of uh, hiring models or they'd just say, oh, those girls aren't pretty anyway, you know, um, or, 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 or they'd accuse the girls of actually being hookers. Uh, they, they'd find something. You know, if someone is dedicated to hating me or someone is dedicated to hating someone, they're going to invent reasons to do so. You know, I mean, like, for example, if I wasn't fat, uh, they'd find some other way to attack my, my physical appearance. That's just how these people operate. So I, I tell the truth as best I can. I try to keep a wall between my public and private personas. And... Um, I don't worry much about people, you know, disliking me. I I, I target the, the the moderate middle when it comes to to anything, whether it's uh, this topic, politics in general. I target the people who are not uh, already hating me and and work to get them on my side. Uh, the people who are barking, angry at uh, stuff I've said, I'm never going to be able to convert them no matter what I do. So I just don't really count them as as being worthy of engagement. Mm -hmm. And look, I mean, we I may have some disagreements. But one thing that I am agreeing on with you in terms of um, this whole issue is that Asian women are hypocritical when it comes to barking about yellow fever. They obviously have white fever. We don't talk about it, at least in America, because there are a lot of liberals who just apologize for women no matter what. Um, and as a liberal, I'm somebody that doesn't agree with that. I agree more with MRAs. I am an MRA. I'm not a feminist. I agree um, with the white fever argument, which I think is rising now because people are starting to realize that Asian women in general, not individually, but in general are very like full of shit when it comes to acting like they're being objectified, particularly when they're the ones that are the most racist when it comes to viewing romantic partners. They want somebody with money. They want somebody that's white. They want to have a baby, like you mentioned, that's white because um, they're worried about their children being successful in society. And rather than fighting the racial inequality that's in our world they're looking to get the best out of it by having a white baby that's not helping anybody um and in that that part i agree with you so i don't want to make it seem like i'm just looking here to attack you 100 percent. i do have disagreements with what some of the things that you said but overall i'm here to talk about um this issue of asian women and white worshiping and how it affects dating preferences so i just want to bring that out there i don't know if you have any comments about that but well, that's fair, man. That's fair. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I dis, dis, I have disagreements with just about everyone I engage with. You know, if I, if I only interact with people I agree with 100, percent I'd basically have to lock myself in a closet and only talk to myself. And even then, my, my opinions on, on things have shifted over time. So, you know, I mean, I, for example, you know, the stuff I've written about the Philippines, I have some disagreements with that. You know, now in, in 2018, because I've, I'm a different person. I've, I've grown a little, and I've, I've changed my perspectives on some things. So, you know, I, I, I totally get where you're coming from. Mm. Um, and with that being said, I guess from my point in terms of my main disagreement would come to this and I'll just set it up, um, with, with basically just giving you the idea. Um, now you've somewhat praised Filipino women for being submissive, right? And you told white women to be more like Filipino women from that perspective, from somebody that has written on some uh, on a website called altright.com and has talked about why Trump, people who should get a job in the Trump administration. It would concern people because it turns from an argument of, okay, Asian women have white fever, which is legitimate. And then it looks, it, it turns to you saying that you're looking as a white male for a subservient Asian woman who is basically going to re be a replacement for a white woman that turned to feminism and went away from traditional marriage. Um, my question is, is that, are you that, are you looking for an Asian woman to replace a white woman who left for feminism? Or are you just bringing up these talking points to bring up that there's white worship in the Philippines? Well, um, uh, just just a minor correction. I don't actually write for altright.com. Um, I wrote for a website called WriteOn, which was merged into altright.com. But due to a disagreement between me and Richard Spencer, I was not allowed to join the new site. It's just that my articles from WriteOn happen to be hosted there. But uh, my my view on on interracial dating has changed somewhat since I went to the Philippines. It actually changed because I went to the Philippines, and I've I've said uh, my my piece on this. Uh, there's an article on my blog called. Uh, race mixing is bad, MK, in which I said, you know, I don't care if people, you know, about interracial dating. It's none of my business, but 
I've personally decided that I would not want to – I'm going to – if I'm going to get married and have children, it's going to be with a white woman simply because I, I want that cultural compatibility, which is something you really can't get if you're, if you're, inter- if you're dating interracially. It's, it's somewhat possible, but it's more difficult. Like if I had, uh, <clears throat> if I had mo- uh, gone back to the Philippines, I'd married a Filipino woman. Um, you know, I, I'd be raising my kids, uh, you know, they, they'd be biracial and they would be torn between uh, American culture and Filipino culture. And we, we've seen in the U.S. Um, there's uh, been, I mean, half, uh, half white, half Asian men have been somewhat overrepresented, for example, with street shooters. We have to take, for example, Elliot Roger, who was uh, – his, his, um, his psychosis was in part motivated by the fact – that uh, you know, he's, his mother was Asian. He was raised in the U.S. and he never felt he never felt uh, white enough to fit in with white people or Asian enough to fit in with Asians. Um, you know, that was a pretty obvious source of his his psychosis. Uh, number two is if I raise if I marry a Filipino woman and I raise them in the Philippines, I'm never going to be able to integrate fully into the culture just because for racial reasons. You know, it doesn't matter if I. If I learned uh, Filipino, it doesn't matter if I become a citizen, uh, if I've lived there for years and years and years, they're always going to see me as that white guy. You know, I, I don't want to be a perennial outsider in a culture. And, you know, to comparison, I've uh, spent a lot of time living in, in Hungary. I'm actually in Hungary right now. And I have actually assimilated uh, to a certain extent in the culture because I, I can speak a little Hungarian, um, and when I'm walking down the street, people think I'm Hungarian. I don't get I don't get hustled by uh, all the drug dealers and hookers like the idiot British tourists here do. Um, I, I I like that. I, I if I'm going to move somewhere, I want to to be able to fold myself into the culture to to a certain extent. You know, speak the language and uh, and and understand the culture. And, and that's something that you know a white person simply cannot do in Asia. Um, I, I, saying all that, I, I want to reiterate that I don't care if people you know date interracially. You know, if you if you fall in love uh, and you can build a life with someone of a different race, then by all means do so. You you shouldn't break that up due to some autistic um, you know alt-right ideology about race mixing or whatnot. But for my personal choice is that I would just rather not do that because it just introduces unnecessary complications to the relationship. Okay. Um, so to follow up then, are you looking for a white woman to have, I guess, more what would be stereotypical Asian qualities, given that you've written articles that said, like, this is lessons that white women can take from Asian women? Well, yeah, I'd like a woman who's agreeable. You know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I somewhat joke about uh, some, some of my commentary on, on gender relations, as it were, is, is a bit trollish, you know, and a bit extreme. But really, at the end of the day, what I want is a woman who is, um, you know, agreeable, uh, which is, is difficult to find in the U.S. these days, um, particularly, particularly with my public profile. You know, I was, um, you know. Coming back from the Philippines, uh, I spent the next uh, year and a half in a relationship with a woman who was completely and utterly crazy and, and left a, enough psychological scars on me that it took a long time for me to heal. Um, and um, you know, over here in Eastern Europe, I've I've uh, I've, met, I've dealt with plenty of women who uh, you know who who would match that that calendar. Uh, you know, I uh, women women who are agreeable and, and pleasant and and aren't uh, look constantly looking to get one up on me and and who aren't absorbed in their in their smartphones. That that's that's the big thing that's starting to annoy me. The smartphones and the constant seeking of attention that you see among among women in the West. Uh, it's less prevalent out here, and it gets less prevalent the further east you go. You know, I you know uh, it, that's 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 just something I would um, the, the the characteristics I praised Asian women for having they're not necessarily exclusive to Asian women in fact they, they really aren't you know um, going back to like the the article I wrote six six uh, things white girls can learn from Filipinas there's nothing um, you know, there's nothing preventing white women or any women of any race from embodying those those characteristics it just so happens that Filipinas happen to have them you know uh, I that, that's just my, my perspective on things um, one more question comes to mind uh, how much do you think that feminism has uh, impacted dating culture in the Americas, at least? Um, I don't think it's feminism really so much anymore as it is technology. Feminism left its um, its mark on the the culture through such things as false rape accusations and and the constant uh, the, the constant grind of anti male anti male behavior. Uh, and we started and it's com- combining with with technological advances that have really 
put a wall between men and women. Like I would, I would name the sm- invention of the smartphone as the single biggest thing in recent memory that has worsened relationships between men and women because it it commodifies communication and, and depersonalizes it. You know, I I don't know how old you are. I've uh, I'm I'm going to be turning thirty this year. I'm not I'm not that uh, you know I'm not that old. But I remember an era before before the smartphone and before internet access, an era where if you wanted to you know talk to someone, you had to call them up on the phone. Um, I, I, you know, the iPhone wasn't introduced until uh, I think 2007 when I was, uh, you know, a sophomore in in college. Um, so back then, uh, c- communication was a lot more personal, and people were a lot more open to it. You know, you could you could walk down the street and, and ask someone for directions. You know, if you were looking to get somewhere, if you were in a bar, you could come up to a girl and talk to her and, and get her number and maybe take her home. Uh, because people back then were, were much more sociable, but now everyone's on their 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 goddamn smartphones, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> just you know, twittering away, you know, playing video games. And in the case of, of women, they're seeking attention via Instagram and other social media pro, uh, profiles. And as a result, you've got you know younger kids. Uh, I have difficulty relating to um, you know Americans born after like ninety four, ninety five. Um, Born in an era where they don't, uh, they've never known an era without the internet, without Facebook, without smartphones, because, and because of that, their their social skills are stunted to the point where you can't even really have a conversation with them in many cases. Um, that you get something like Tinder, uh, which is basically takes all the uh, the personal element out of out of dating. You know, instead of talking to someone, meet, meeting someone in a naturalistic way and getting to know them, you just swipe. Swipe, swipe, until you see one whose pictures you like. You have a few, you know, stilted conversations, and then if you're lucky, you, you go off for, for to a date where you get drunk and you hook up. Um, I, I I think that has done way more damage to the cultural fabric than feminism has, because feminism's importance is really kind of receding in our um, in our modern culture. You still get vestiges of it with uh, you know the Me Too stuff and false rape accusations, but I don't think that's as big a factor anymore. I think attention is uh, uh, the uh, I think technology and uh, constant attention seeking. It, it's sort of uh, these these technologies sort of. Uh, and plan women that has a bigger negative effect than to feminism at this point okay and by the way i'm two years younger i'm about to turn 28 this year so ah, cool. yeah i'm in that same boat um and it, from what i'm gathering it's more about i guess for you the way that dating has been commodified and the way the internet has changed dating in general that's made it less attractive or less desirable for men to go out and find a romantic partner is that is that what you're getting at yeah, I mean that. That's it. I mean, I I, I learned how to uh, to talk to girls and and socialize the normal way. I would call people on the phone. I would go up to them at bars. I was I was raised on uh, you know I I discovered what what people call the manosphere or whatever you want to call it back in two thousand seven two thousand eight. You know, I was raised on on guys like uh, like Rouge V and um, you know Hartiste. And uh, back then, you know, going up to um, you, 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 you went up and talked to people in, in bars or or talked to people on the street. You had you had normal human connections, and that doesn't exist anymore in the West. And and I see actually it, it this uh, this cultural rot extending to the East as well. Like you know, smartphones are becoming very very popular over here in Eastern Europe, and um, not so much in Ukraine, but I'm sure it'll get there eventually. You know, it's, it's like a it's like it's like a cancer, and it's basically separating men from women, and and uh, uh, you know, getting them to, uh, to to sever these human connections. To give an example of how this is sort of unfolding, uh, you know, the average age at which uh, American you know teenagers are losing their virginity has been rising steadily for the past few years, and statistics show that millennials have been having less and less sex. And this isn't because they're more moral or because they're more religious. It because it's because they're so socially inept that they can't figure out how to have normal relationships. That's that's uh, a direct effect of technology. You know, you have women who are t- seeking attention on Instagram and Tinder, and you've got men who are retreating into to video games and pornography. Okay, I mean, yeah, it's pretty bad over here. Uh, whether, it, from my experience, whether it be through feminism or online dating culture, it's just absolutely terrible over here. And um, on that note, I would say that anybody who can find a way to I guess find somebody who doesn't go towards that culture, which is online dating culture or feminism or just outside the country who doesn't know any somebody who doesn't know any of this. I think it's in a man's best interest to find somebody like that rather than try to find somebody through our particular um, you know means of trying to find uh, a romantic partner. It's just it's it's ridiculous. But 
Uh, those were all my questions. My final point, I guess, for you would be to say, like, if you have anything to say, particularly to your credits at this point, like, I would allow you to do that right now. Go ahead. Eh, well, you know, if you don't like it, uh, that's your problem. You know, I don't really have anything to say to them because I, I've been, I've been, I've been talking to them for you know my entire writing career, and I know how exactly how it's going to go. So whatever, man. <laughs>